So Larissa's running a little bit late. Hello. Hi. Hi, guys. Larissa had a, um, we're making tikka masala, guys. Um, she had a work call, so I am starting the live so that we can get um, to drinking and get started. She said she's wrapping up, so I'm just going to get it started so you didn't think we were running on CPT time because we're trying to make an effort to be on time, y'all. I know the first time I was running late, so here we are. Are y'all drinking tonight? What are you guys sipping on? Hi, y'all. Hey, guys. I have a Crow's Hermitage tonight, and then I bought three other wines because y'all know I don't have any self-control. I bought two Gruner Veltliners, meat, lots of meat. Okay, so we're doing tikka masala, chicken tikka masala tonight. Hey, Les. Um... And then I bought a Northern Rome Syrah, um, a really fruit forward one tonight. So I'm excited about that, but we're just chilling. Really nice curry tonight, kind of Cabernet Blanc or Cabernet Franc? Cabernet Blanc, interesting. Okay. Um, we're just doing a nice kind of like entry level curry tonight. Nothing too crazy. Um, hey boo, um, not too spicy. If you've never made a curry, um, this is kind of like a gringo's curry, if you will. Um, it's very good. Um, I love tikka masala. This is kind of like this one and butter chicken kind of get intermingled and confused with each other a lot. So I like this one, Syrah Muvedra. Nice. Make it spicy. Yeah, so there was like an option to add a little cayenne to yours if you want it spicy. I'm adding cayenne to mine because I like heat. So... If you want to add like spice or red pepper flakes, I like it the hotter the better. So I definitely made some spice for mine, but we're just going to uh, pour up our wine. Let um, Larissa hop in so we can go live and then uh, we will get started cooking. But we wanted to do, <laughs> none of us are gringos. There might be some gringos in here. You don't know. You don't know. Not everybody eats curry, so I didn't want to do one that was too crazy, and I didn't want that want one that would take like a bunch of equipment. The point is to stay home, so I didn't want everybody to have to go out and get different types of equipment or anything like that. This is stuff that you have at home, equipment that you already have at home, nothing that's too difficult to make or that requires like additional trips to the grocery store. I just wanted it to be kind of stuff you already have in your pantry or just one quick stop at the grocery store nothing too crazy no it's blanc soft block and a chardonnay oh nice okay so i'm drinking a noble rives by crow's Hermitage. it's a 2018 this one was really highly rated for wine spectator usually i don't go for really high ratings but um if you guys were following our like wine recommendations, you noticed that Northern Rones can get a little bit pricey. Um, San Joseph, Cornas, hey boo. Um, those can get a little bit pricey, so you can find some really good values in Crow's Hermitage. Um, and so I went for that one. It's a little bit fruit forward, a little bit more approachable, and so that was the route that I went. Um, a little tight this one I think by the end of the class because this is a 2018 so Syrah you know is a really tannic grape it's already you know really strong so this one I think because it's so young I think it just needs a little bit of air so I think by the time we're done cooking and everything like that um, we'll be ready to go um, I think, did I see Larissa? Not yet. She said she's almost done. How many of you guys are cooking with us tonight? I saw Leslie in here. Les, are you cooking with us tonight? Are you just drinking? Hi. It's been, um, I don't know about you guys, and I'm going to need a little bit of grace tonight. I have had a day, you guys. Like, it's been a day. I am segueing into wine from a Kraken and Coke. Um, so, 
Okay, Allison, you cooking? Nice, okay. Um, if, if For those of you that are cooking, if you want to, if you're doing the basmati rice, um, if you take your rice, rinse it off. Um, I'm doing one and a half cups of rice. So if you are going to do your rice um, tonight, don't forget about your rice today like you did about the beans last week, guys. If you're going to cook the basmati rice, we're gonna wanna rinse it off to rinse off some of the starch. So while we're waiting for Larissa, go ahead and rinse off your rice in cold water. You're gonna do one part rice to two parts water when we cook it, but go ahead and rinse off your rice while we're waiting for everybody to come in. And Saran Indian curry, match made in heaven. I know that, you understand. Uh, but this one, this one was a uh, 2018. I think this one needs a little bit of time. I have two Gruner Velt leaners and then my, y'all know I always get like a, an extra one. I got an Alto Adige um, Pinot Grigio as just my additional pairing just to see how that one goes. So I'm going to see how the Pinot Grigio goes with this one because I think the acidity is really going to pair nicely and kind of cut into some of the fat and the creaminess of of the uh the curry dish so i'm just gonna see where um i think i saw her i see you when i make it i'm gonna make cauliflower oh i guess i guess if you want to be healthy that's that's great you know i need to hi beanie baby you guys my my boo is in here hi blair um Oh, keto. Okay, fine, I guess. It's gross, but all right. Um, so <laughs> there she is. Y'all know I'm like technologically trapped, challenged, so let me just, I don't know how it works in reverse when she does the request. So is something gonna pop up, y'all? I have to click on her. Don't, don't kill me, y'all. Go live with Lotus. There she goes. <laughs> Yay! I was like, um, listen here, y'all. I'm Teddy Riley up in here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, um, I'm gonna cut everything off. It's just gonna be like, mm. Yeah, I literally just came off of, like, I'm working. I still have work to do. So, like, I just had a virtual taste in one of my key accounts. Because everyone's trying to pivot and figure out how to work during these Rona times. So I'm like on the phone, like, okay, gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. I'm like trying to like do the, like close the, the laptop like this. Like, what if I do this? You gotta do like Homer in the bushes, like. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get my apron and let's get it going. So I did my prep work. We got a plan. Yeah. So. Let me get my wine. I'm here, y'all. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's do yes. <laughs> I was telling them that it's been a struggle. And did you get rice to cook? I already Sorry. made my rice. I was really on it. I was like, okay, okay, I'm ready. I made my rice. And I didn't want to forget about it. Like, I can make rice pretty good, but I wasn't trying to treat it like the beans. <laughs> I not believe y'all last the week. These were okay, but they just, they weren't living their best lives. No. Like, had I, like, had a little bit more, um, you know, attention and bandwidth. But, yeah. no, my rice is already made, so. Okay. Yeah. I just need to open up my Syrah. I have my Gruner already open. It's delicious. Love. Okay. Um, we gonna figure it out. Hey, hubs. Allison <laughs> loved her beans. We so, are what living. kind of Syrah did you get? Please know it. Please know this is real life. <laughs> I think my Syrah is a little young, but I think by the time we're done cooking, it'll open up. Yeah, I think it's a 2018. I got a Crow's Hermitage. I think I it's saw just... that. I'm... Oh, you got yeah. money. <laughs> you got money. No. <laughs> I found quite a deal at Total Wine. Touche. Like, you know, call it what you want, but, you know, Total. 
from a retail perspective, so I'm gonna give y'all a little bit of insider truth here. Um, on my side of the business, what Total does is uh, they have a very, very, very small markup for you know most wines. And it drives us crazy because our suggested retail price for our wines is always higher than what they do. So they do provide great value. But, you know, if you know that there's like a, a, a wine that you can pretty much get anywhere, like that has great distribution, they have the lowest margin. So, yeah, you do get the bomb deals at total. I can't front on them. And Even it's like when great. I can be mobile, I like going to Purple's Quartz Food and supporting Stephanie. Absolutely. Or That's our, um, <laughs> what's the um, what's the one in Grant Park? Bar Taco? No. Oh, Vino Taco. Vino yes. I was like, Bar Taco? No, it's well, next door. No, no, it's all under the same, well, it used to be. I don't know if yeah. it still is. Barcelona, Bar Taco, Vino Teca. Vino Teca. All... Um, yeah. I like doing their tasting group. So it's like, I do like to support those, but for these classes... I always go above and beyond, buy too much, drink too much. <laughs> like, oh, you went in this week. <laughs> quarantine too much. I'm drinking too much. Yeah. I need to pay too little. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, my knee jerk reaction is to always, you know, support local first. But yeah. you know, listen, the, and the, the other side of it, too, is that when you're dealing with your smaller shops, they're going to have wines that you can't necessarily get at total. They're going to be wines that are a little bit more off the beaten path mm -hmm. and other benefits. Oh, totally, I mean, totally. My amazing. boutique wines, my and they oh. they'll special order. This if I'm buying anything more than one bottle, I will go. You to... got a spot license? <laughs> you got on a spotlight? <laughs> do, do you, but do you <laughs> see me? On. <laughs> okay, so let me talk about that. Y'all that have been tuning in, my usual camera lady, my lovely Ashley, could not join me tonight. So shout out to my co-host of LBC Podcast. It's my co-host of the and founder of the podcast that I am a co-host on. She lent me our tripod or her tripod, but the tripod we use when we're filming because I was going to have to be like, hello, um, now we're doing this look at the flick of the wrist while trying to record and so i reached out to her and she was like yeah you can use the tripod but it comes with this light so do you see me turn mine on i'm nervous that i'm gonna get hot but i'm gonna turn mine on too so i mean you but then i'll just have this quarantine glow so yeah <laughs> hello me, i said well good thing. i literally came in hot let me not do too much but yeah let's go ahead and get started yeah you know, I okay got so hopefully you guys have all of your stuff prepped. I'm going to keep an eye on, obviously, since I don't have my camera lady, I'm not going to be able to have somebody reading me the questions. So I'm going to try to look at them. But if you don't see me looking at the camera and you write a question, dog, I can't see them. So just wait yes. until you see me. And there should be a little um, question thingy. Like oh, if you yeah, look at the little comments, there should be a little thing where you can leave your um questions. Yeah, I don't know what I just did. Yeah, put them in there, but yeah, oh, you're gonna have to see them because I can't see them, sis. Okay, yeah, so it's got like a if box they pop with a up, I'll be able in to it. see them. If you have okay. a question, put it in there. If it's about food, if it's about wine, just wait till the end because leave it for the people that are cooking with us. Okay. I'm thinking that if people put um, their questions in that question mark box, it'll pop up for me because I remember Ashley was able to answer some of those questions from the question mark box last week. So, okay, we got great. Let's, this is Do real you see what I'm using today? My paella pan because you can cook more than just paella in these, and it's really big and wide. And why not use it for more than one thing? So. No, I'm not going to do that because I had that whole, I'm going to use my, my thing. <laughs> yeah, do you. I'm just going to use it. Mine is different. My, my, my setup is different than what most of y'all are doing. I was overzealous in my direction, so wasn't thinking clearly. Yes. So we won't, we won't show your food. Thank you. Today. <laughs> um, so go ahead and heat up your pan and add a little bit of olive oil to the pan, y'all. Okay. Once you've got, I'd say, a little bit, you know, a scotch, like a tablespoon or two. Um, what we're going to do is sear our chicken. You don't have to worry about getting it off of the marinade or anything. We're going to sear it in the yogurt marinade that we have it in once the oil is hot, okay? 
So I have do mine I in a bowl as usual. Uh -huh. Do I need to put my sauce on the side, the masala thing that I showed you earlier? <laughs> do I need to start brewing that up now? Yes. Um, okay. You put yours in a pot first with about a cup of water. Perfect. And okay. put it on slow. Do you ladies post these recipes anywhere after? You may DM me your email address and I'll send it to you. Boom. Done and done. And, then and I try to have, I don't know, we'll figure it out this week, but I've been putting them on YouTube so that they're evergreen, so that you can always go back and relive the moment and walk through the, the recipe with us. So, yeah, we got options. Thank you, Nicole. And then in a few weeks, I may compile... Do y'all wash your chicken before cooking it? Set this record straight. Okay, Deb. Yes. Nice. I, I know that. that the CDC said don't. Wait, what did they say not to do? They said don't wash your meat before cooking it because it could spread contaminants around your yeah. kitchen. Okay. It's it's a I'm going to chalk that up to it being a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing. I'm I mean, going to wash my meat and then I sanitize my sink and my counters afterwards because there are also studies that say there's a lot of fecal matter found on meat because mm -hmm. they're not washing it after they're like butchering it in these nasty warehouses. So I would rather just sanitize my work surface after I've washed my meat in my house than be eating fecal matter. So yes, I wash mine. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a cultural thing. It's a cultural thing. <laughs> the cultural CDC thing. can say what they want to say. I'm still going to wash my chicken. That's, now, when you go to your restaurant, no, they ain't washing your chicken because that's not cold. Every restaurant I've ever worked in, I've washed the chicken. So if you ever came anywhere I've worked, oh. I wash it because that's nasty. Well, look at that. Right. Well, there's that. All right, so now we put in the chicken. So if your oil is hot, go ahead and put your chicken in. I came in hot, but I'm ready. Like, I had all my stuff ready. You were over-prepared and qualified, let me just tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I was nervous. I was like, I can't be out here not ready to rock. So. so I'm just getting a nice, even layer of it on here. As you, as you heard when I put my chicken in here, um, I agree with you about washing the chicken. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> My dad is here, y'all. It is written productions. Um, I lost a lot of the temperature of my pan when I put it in here. You heard when I put it in here, it was sizzling, and then there was no sizzle. That means the temperature of my pan dropped dramatically, so I cut the temperature of the pan up a little bit. It was on medium. I'm on, like, a medium high now because I want to bring it back up. So. Okay. Same. They got a nice little sizzle happening. Yeah, if you've got a good sizzle, then you're good to go. If you don't have a good sizzle, cut it up a little bit until you have a good sizzle. You don't want it burning, but I do want to hear something. You don't want it just in there in a pool of warm. What are we drinking? Sorry, I already started, sis. Oh, us too. Well, us too. Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Lurce. You, you didn't get to the, I was in here just stalling, girl. I was stalling. Oh, my hey, Oh, I got to switch the screen around because I got my, my glow, my lights. Hold on. So tonight I am drinking this Bruner, excuse me, Brun, Bruner, Velt, Bruner Veltliner mm -hmm. coming out of Austria. And I have a red wine. I have a Syrah from the Northern Rhone that I still have yet to open. So for those of you who are joining us, welcome. Normally I start and Jordan joins in, but Jordan had to take one for the squad today. I, uh, you know, real time working. I had a virtual tasting with a key account and I'm like trying to get off and here we are, we're making it work. So I have a Gruner Veltliner and as does um, Jordan, but she's drinking the red already. So you're drinking your, is that the Crow's Hermitage? Hermitage? It is. I was telling them that I had to make a segue from my rum and Coke to my <laughs> wine. So I went rum and Coke, red wine, and then I will... <laughs> I will do my Gruner Veltliner in just a moment. Yes. End of the month in our side of the business is crazy. Hey, D Lynn. <laughs> so end of the month for us is crazy. You want me to pop and pop back? Okay. 
D Lynn's been crashing parties, and we can't crash the party when there's two of us on at the same time. But we appreciate you, bro. And thank you for all of your continuous support. It really means the world to us. <laughs> He's like the mentor, um, and uh, we aspire to be uh, him and amongst him. Yes. And see at the table. The, that's the, the, the level we aspire to. So thank you, sir, for all that you do. For the culture. For the culture. So I'm going to just keep it real and show y'all what I did because I had a lot going on today. But you got to um, show them um, the faux pas so that we can show them how to yeah. make it right. So Jordan in the prep work was like, yeah, just put everything together. That's not um, what I said. That's not what I said. That's how I interpreted it. But that's, that's not what I said. said. That's how I interpreted it. You heard what you know, wanted to hear. Is yours. Thank you, Dylan. So much appreciated. So she did not say what to do what I did. <laughs> I <laughs> interpreted it that way. So what I did essentially was I chopped up my onions and my tomatoes and I literally took like everything that was in the masala part of the recipe and I threw it all together. So mine is a bit different. So Jordan is the professional in the group when it comes to the culinariness. So I don't know if culinariness is a word, but we gonna work with it. So she said, I got you. We're just gonna treat yours kind of like a slow cooker style. All is not lost. So what I'm going to do is, and I also did the dairy free version. So I used um, the- uh, Cashew butter. Instead of actually using uh, the heavy cream. So all was not lost, fortunately. So I'm going to put this in a bowl in a pot, excuse me, and put some hot water and just let it simmer and let all those flavors melt. Now, for the record, it tastes bomb, but mine just look a little different. I, since I was stressed today, Shakira, hi, I was stressed. <laughs> but what we're going to do if, like, because I know, like, some of the other recipes, like with the glazed chicken we did the other day, somebody did it in the slow cooker and then just um, put it in the broiler after she said it turned out amazing. I think this would be a good method for if you were going to do this in a slow cooker, like searing your chicken, adding your onions and all your ingredients together, and then adding it to the slow cooker. So there's still a way. That's why I got into culinary more than like baking, because if you mess up baking, it's a wrap. You got to start over. With yeah. food, there is all, if, where there's a will, there's a way. As long as it's not like salt, most well, of the time. Add salt. You can't. Yeah, like if the salt is in there, it's 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 too late. But it's too late. <laughs> but as long as it's not like something like that, most of the time you can save it. So in this case, we're just gonna slow cook it and make it like a curry stew, and it's gonna be amazing. So if you like Larissa, just did was that. Over. And you didn't, uh, you didn't was speak up. Just uh, slow and nice and slow. Add a little bit of water to it. Just Get it up to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, lower it to a simmer. And we're just going to cook it nice and slow with the onions and the chicken, and you'll be fine. You will be absolutely fine. If you are cooking along, um, my chicken is about mm, probably 50% cooked right now. I'm going to lower mine because I've got quite a few bubbles going right now, and I'm wearing black. And it just doesn't, it doesn't go with all the popping. My bride sisters are in here. Hello. Hey. Hey, y'all. Come on, man. We have big, been hearing different things during these uh, Rona times. Big fans, all. big fans. Welcome, ladies. Um, we want to get this um, about 50% cooked is what we're looking for. So if you're at about 50% um, cooked, then you can just turn this off, and we're just going to move it over to the side and wait for um, the next step. Okay. Grab another pot. I'm grabbing like um, a stock pot size. Um, if you've got like a Dutch oven, that'll work too. Um, we're going to assemble the rest of the sauce in this. You want something a little bit deeper because once we've assembled the sauce, then the chicken is going to um, go into here with it. We are making a tikka masala today, and then we have paired it with um, Crow's Emmertage and a Gruner Veltliner just to do a red and a white for our pairing today. And then we'll sit and talk about the differences once we're done. 
We are here to dispel the myth that you can only have beer with Indian food. That is like this myth that is so untrue. I um, hate beer. I actually don't mind a good beer. I, I'm going to grow up one day. I swear. That's how I got Dre. We were at a concert and the line for the bar was too long. I was like, can we just get a beer? <laughs> he was like, oh, she the one. <laughs> yes, so. you can come over. I got gloves and masks. <laughs> <laughs> I've got black girl magic. You can come right on over. <laughs> yes. If you've got your next pot ready, go ahead and put um, a little bit of olive oil, you know, just a skosh, about a tablespoon. Get that heating up. If you're ready with that, once it's warm, um, we're going to do, we're going to go in with your onions. So whenever your olive oil is hot, I know everybody's goes at a different pace. We're, um, we're going in with our onions next. So I'm going to let this heat up just a little bit before I add those in. And then chicken is doing its thing. Smelling good. Does you guys marinate on your tikka masala? Is that smelling amazing? I am. Uh, yeah. Well, you know my situation is different, so my chicken done. <laughs> You've been craving tikka masala. So this recipe will be, our live will be up on Marissa's YouTube if you want to catch it later. And if you send me a DM, I'll send you the recipe that we've created tonight, and you are welcome to make it. And uh, join in. We do this every Thursday at 7.30 and drink wine and eat. Really, really good. Really good. Last week we made a paella. It was fabulous. It was so good. Like, we always have pictures in this house. It all went away. It was all gone. And it's only two of us. Two and a half. So, say that this, whatever I did, it smells amazing. The little slow pot, crock Absolutely. pot. Absolutely. That's the beauty about curries is like you don't want, you want to develop the flavors kind of low and slow. Um, a nice, easy process. You don't want to do it too quickly. Um, but this curry recipe was actually developed in Scotland. It was by an Indian chef who was trying to appease the guests in a restaurant who said a dish was too spicy and his caveat to that was to add some cream to a, a really spicy tomato dish and tikka masala was born. Um, so this was kind of a really nice entry level curry dish, but you know, I don't care what the origin is. It's delicious. So I feel like I can compete in paella now. Okay, Allison, I see you. We may have to, the next Thanksgiving, we may have to have like a paella song if you, if you're about that life now. That's my cousin, guys. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So just give your onions a little bit of stir. We want to just saute them down a little bit. Y'all know how I feel about seasoning as we go as opposed to adding a bunch of uh, salt at the end. So I'm just going to add a little bit of salt and pepper now. And we're just going to cook these down just a little bit. The fact that I don't have to do all that right now, I'm like, oh, look at God. <laughs> you have what now? The fact that I'm just simmering all my stuff down like on a super low heat. I'm like, okay. I well, can open up talk about your wine. <laughs> oh, wait. I see a question in the box. Oh. So you're going to have to see them because I don't see them on my end. Okay. Can you make this in the Instapot if you add more liquid? Yes, you can. Um, that's kind of the method that um, Larissa was doing, but my suggestion would be to do it with, oh, Larissa, I almost knocked you out of this, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, it was man. like, remove her, I was like, oh, wrong button. Um, yeah, my suggestion, though, would be to do it with a little bit of stock or a bouillon cube or something like that um, to add more flavor and not just add water if you're going to do that. Maybe like two or three cups if you're going to cook it for more than four or five hours. Do you have a recipe for a paneer or a veggie burger? Absolutely. I have a fantastic paneer 
um, recipe, actually. My grandfather is from India, so I have some, some pretty cool um, Indian recipes from my grandmother. So um, I can definitely incorporate either those into our cooking classes or um, send that over to you when I send you the tikka masala recipe as well. But um, definitely a veggie version. I really like this tikka masala recipe with um, like a seared tofu as well. Um, I love tofu. So I don't know if you're like um, vegan or just vegetarian, but if you do soy-based like vegetarian products, this sauce on tofu is fantastic. Or just seared veggies, like if you grill some veggies, zucchini, eggplant, asparagus, and then just pour this tikka masala like marinade over the veggies. Amazing. Amazing. Love to hear it. Yes. It's smelling good in here already. Again, my, my method is a bit different. I'm just letting this cook down so that the flavors can all mm -hmm. kind of I'm going to take your advice and add a bit of chicken stock to it just mm -hmm. to kind of give it a bit more time to mellow down mm -hmm. um, and add a bit more flavor. I always, that's pretty much if there's water in a recipe and there's some type of meat involved, I'm adding some type of stock instead of the water. Yeah. If it's anything more than a cup, I'll, I'll add stock. Yep. I'm going to try my Gruner. I have a 2017 and a 2018. was from, um, I got it from two different regions on purpose, but I'll, I'll get into that later, but oh, this is fantastic. So let's talk a bit while you're kind of working on that. I can talk a bit to the wines. Yes. Um, we landed where we landed because yeah. Indian food has traditionally been pegged as hard to pick with wine. Um, I actually read an article I try to do my research before we come on these things because um, I always go down my rabbit hole of not wanting to look crazy. <laughs> Story I, of read, <laughs> I ran across an article that was in New York Times that, you know, basically said, you know, Indian restaurants and Indian food is so much more than just beer. There was this whole thread, I think it was like Dr. Vino or something, where he at, it was on these notoriously difficult foods to pair. And just to see the directions that people were going, but people always, the, the majority of people kept saying, oh, beer, beer, beer. I'm like, no, 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 no. There has to be another way. Like we talk about food and wine pairing. We're talking about elevating the experience. We're talking about elevating the food and allowing the wine and the food to either complement each other, contrast each other in a good way. My mm -hmm. girl Kelly Mitchell called it tension. You want this balanced tension with the food and the wine so like that, that together they create this beautiful harmony. I so, like that tension, yeah. But we do, like, why would we talk about beer? The reason why, Raquel, the reason why people would say beer was because Indian food is, you know, traditionally um, looked at to be spicy. And so they feel like beer just kind of clears off your palate, refreshes your palate. But at the same time, it's not doing anything to elevate the food or the experience. It's just cooling off your palate for the next bite, which right. is cool. But, I mean, it's low alcohol, it's easy drinking, but there are sweeter wines for that, you know, that have low alcohol that help to offset that heat if you have a dish that has heat. So Jordan brought up a great point when we were talking about, well, what do we pair this with? Because I haven't made tikka masala before. I haven't, I ain't made none of this stuff before. But <laughs> Can I pause um, you really quickly? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go ahead and add in your ginger and your all of your spices that you have left except for garam masala. If you're cooking with us, your fresh ginger, y'all know I'm, when I'm working, I, I'm, I do the fresh and I do the things, but I have the little squeezy ginger guy because I'm home and I can do that. It's my business. Um, so go in with your ginger. I pre-measured <laughs> out my spices, so I have them all here. Everybody except um, garam masala are in here. I'm putting those in, and we're going to toast these for about a minute. We just want to develop a little bit of depth of flavor on the spices, so we're going to toast them for about a minute. Once those are toasted for about a minute in your pan, add in your tomato paste and your tomatoes. Shakira, to answer your question, no, we did not use any ghee. 
Uh, we could have. Um, I had olive oil, so I used olive oil at the beginning. And there was somebody that asked how to do it with seared tofu. I will answer that once we're done talking about the wine, how to do it with the seared tofu. But once you've just gotten your spices toasted, go in with your tomato paste. If you didn't get tomato paste, um, it's only like two tablespoons. If you've got ketchup, that's an alternative that you can use. Just put two tablespoons of ketchup in there. That's a little chef hack. And then your fresh tomatoes or your can of tomatoes. Larissa, as you work. Yeah, no worries. So ultimately we're like, okay, well, what are the ingredients? Because I've never made tikka masala and this isn't a spicy dish. Like there is some chili pepper, um, ch yeah, chili pepper, chili powder, excuse me, that's added to this, but you can add the spice to your liking. So, you know, when we were trying to figure out well, what's going to go with it, um, Rajat Parr, who is an amazing, you know, world renowned sommelier who now makes these amazing wines with um, Bloom. Um, I believe he's partners with Bloomsfield. And I know Shakira put um, what Rajat's um, wines are in the chat, please. But um, he's from Calcutta. And so he has an amazing book. I'll pull it out. The, at the Sommelier's Atlas of Wine. Hold on. Well, great book. Yes, the Sommelier's Atlas of Taste. Thank you, Domaine Delacote. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, he references is, you know, his roots and how it's definitely more to Indian food than just beer. You look at the flavors, you look at the different spices and that are going into the dish, and then what are you going to pair with it to help complement that? So we both came up with Northern Roan, and then I thought maybe like a Gewürztraminer because that is a traditional pairing with spicier foods, mm -hmm. but this is a spicy dish. Thank you for all that rundown, Shakira. See, my girl, she come black through. girl come through with the facts. So because this isn't a spicier dish, Gewürz wasn't going to be the right pairing. So I'm like, well, you know, what about Gruner? So Gruner is, um, <laughs> if you like to get the bang for your buck, one of the few wines that actually come in liter bottles, <laughs> not just the traditional 750. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually got the opportunity to try the Gruner with- Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Oh my gosh, I had a burger about a year ago. I can't remember what I paired it with, but it was like a, it was a some type of salad, something very green, herbal, and it was beautiful. Beautiful. But um, I it's tried the- if you're cooking your tomatoes, guys, just put it on like a medium to medium low heat. We're cooking them until they get kind of mushy. Um, a nice kind of simmering boil on that. If they're cooking really fast, you can just lower the heat. We're trying to get some of that flavor. If they're starting to, um, if some of your spices started to stick to the bottom, use the heat from the tomatoes. Just get them like a nice even layer on the bottom of your pan and use the heat from that to get up all of that flavor from the bottom of your pan because it's not burnt it's toasted we want all of that flavor up from the bottom of the pan and the heat from the tomatoes will bring all that up so just put it on a nice low simmer once you've kind of cleaned the bottom of your pan of all that toasted spices if you're ready you can go in with your lemon juice and your cream keep it on a nice low simmer and then what you're going to do is add enough water until your sauce is thick um i'm not on that step yet so i won't be able to tell you how much water i'm adding my guess if yours looks like mine is probably about a half a cup so start at a half a cup and then work your way up from there but i'm still getting up the flavor from the bottom of my pan i'll probably go about another minute or two with my um tomatoes just kind of low and slow then i'll go in with my lemon juice cream and then kind of assess from there but I'm only adding water if I feel like my sauce is not thick if I feel like it's nice and thick I may just add just a skosh okay skosh bang yes <laughs> so then I started thinking about Gruner and I'm like well you know looking at the ingredients this might work really well so before I put the chicken in the marinade <laughs> I take the marinade 
Um, and it had a touch of bitterness too. And I reached out to Jordan like, is this supposed to taste like this? But when I try it with the Gruner, it tastes bomb. <laughs> so it all kind of just worked together. It's like you have that cumin, that coriander, like all these different spices that are working together. And so you just want a one that's going to help complement that and kind of help offset it. So thank you, babe. That's where we are. Yeah. So the group I'm drinking right now, um, this actually has like a touch of oak to it. I have to turn my screen so y'all can see it. Does but it's, it? all neutral. it's neutral though. It's Slovenian okay. neutral oak. So, and again, like if you like the bang for your buck, Gruners normally will come in a liter bottle. This is a 2019. So, and this is, we're using one as our passport and we're going to Austria. Mm -hmm. This is a dry wine. Um, you know, it's funny because talking about Austrian wines, like whenever they pop up on an exam, I'm like, oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, they don't get too complicated. I mean, this label is super easy. Like they actually label it by the varietal. Um, it's Grunerveld Leaner. You don't have to look at it in any different languages or anything. Like this is what it is. Um, this wine has really nice acidity. It actually has a touch of frizzante, like a touch of, and when I say frizzante, I'm just talking like a little bit of effervescence, which I was super loving. Um, don't judge the fact that the bottle's halfway gone. <laughs> I just realized that. I'm like, it's a liter and the bottle's already halfway gone. It feels like but, a Friday, don't it? Listen, I literally have to wake up every day and think to myself, okay, Lord, what day is it? What day is it? So my daughter is four and her preschool, they've done a really good job of keeping them engaged. So they have the YouTube channel. So they have their morning meeting. The only reason why I know what day it is is because in their morning meeting, they talk about what day of the week it is. <laughs> Monday, Monday, Tuesday. Oh, Jesus. Pray for me. So... This wine has beautiful acidity. Again, it has a touch of frizzante. And here she comes wanting to sing the song, y'all. Let that baby sing. There's a green. There's like this. It, it's not Sauvignon Blanc green, but there's like this green um, component that comes with Gruner that I love. Um, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, like, you know, this wine goes great with salads, um, you know, vegetables. This wine is just... Ugh. It's good. And coming from Austria, it's going to have more of that kind of that cleaner palette. Like it's not going to be, it's going to be more citrus driven, less uh, tropical, not tropical fruit at all because of the climate and everything. Because you got to think, guys, I know that a lot of like, Larissa, I know a lot of your people that join these are like wine people. There's a lot of Psalms on here. I know a lot of my people are not. So it's like, and then I get a lot of questions after this, like, what were y'all talking about? So if you think mm. about from a, like, geographic standpoint in the world, we're thinking about Austria. The closer to the equator obviously means the warmer, and the further yeah. away means cooler. Usually right. cooler climates produce grapes that are not near the sun. Grapes not near the sun are going to mean not as fruity they're not going to be as the grapes the wine is usually going to be more acidic it's not going yeah. to be um as juicy as you say like Gruner Veltliner is from Austria Austria is a very cool climate so it doesn't get very warm there during the day it gets very cold at night so there's a very short like time frame that they have during the day to ripen and then at night it gets very very cold so these are very sharp um, sometimes like very rigid wines um, and so for them to be making this quality of wine under those conditions is amazing because sometimes you know under certain years if it's a really cold year they got to really they got to really work for some sunlight um, and some ripeness on those grapes and the same thing works for really warm regions overly warm grapes means they're going to ripen too quickly which means there's too much sugar and sure. unless you're making a dessert wine that's not a good thing so yeah then there's no acidity and acidity, acidity is what's going to refresh the palate on your wine and when wine. you drink it i don't want kool-aid when i'm drinking wine uh, that's there's a kind of place for that but 
we reference that as kind of flabby when the acidity is in balance. Yeah. So to your point, Jordan, um, yes, as you get closer to the equator, I, it always gets banged up for me. When you get closer to the equator, it gets warmer. The further you get away from the equator, it gets cooler. But you have to think about it from a flip ver um, perspective when you're going to the southern hemisphere. So right. the further south you go in the southern hemisphere, the cooler it gets. Right. The south you go in the northern hemisphere, the warmer it gets. So you kind of have to keep that in mind as well. So again, if you have a wine and you're looking at, you know, where it's from, you know, warmer climates are going to give you more, you know, fruit forward nature wines that might have a touch of residual sugar because the, the grapes can fully ripen. Yeah. Um, they have a bit more body to them as well. Wines that are having, um, that are in cooler climates are going to have higher acidity. And as Jordan said, are just going to be a bit more rigid. And yeah. it, again, it depends on what you like. Yeah. You know, our job is to help you expand your palate. If you traditionally like a sweeter wine, if you like Moscato, cool. Do My you. job is not to judge you. My job is to tell you, well, if you're going to drink Moscato, I suggest you drink Moscato from Piedmont, Italy. Moscato Dosti, which is D.O.C. Yeah, Lua Dosti, yeah. As Adding a your garam masala, guys, if you're ready, if you've got a beautiful, I have this luscious, like, burnt orange looking sauce. So <laughs> <laughs> I haven't forgotten because this is my dinner now. Girl, I'm just going to stew, stew. <laughs> um, I've added in my cream. I didn't go with any water because I'm satisfied with the level of creaminess of my sauce. Add in your garam masala. Give that I a nice little stir. The smell on this is, I can't, I can't even, y'all, this is why I cook. I had such a stressful day, and this is like, what day, okay? This is why I do this. I'm like, nothing happened today. This is all is what, right in the world, okay? So once I've added the garam masala, I've stirred it in, I'm going to add back in the chicken. The chicken has been stewing in its own juices. It's, if there's a party happening over here. Add everybody and the party oh. to the pot, okay? Party goes in the pot. Everybody okay. is partying together. There's no social distancing happening tonight, okay? We want all that flavor. <laughs> okay. We want all of that into the pot. That's why I said make your sauce in something deep enough to withstand everybody in there. Hey, Brill, I saw you come in here. Hey. And then if your chicken wasn't already all the way cooked, once you, um, yes, Allison, I'm trying to tell you, um, if your chicken wasn't all the way cooked, then we're just going to finish cooking it in the, the remainder of this sauce. While this is simmering in the sauce, we're going to make the rice because I didn't want you guys multitasking this evening, uh -uh. okay? We're going to work our way up to that. On another another day. <laughs> so mine is saucy. I'm gonna show you. Jordan. Look at mine real quick, just so you can kind of see what I'm working let's see, with. Let's see, let's see, I'm yeah. gonna continue like, to simmer down a bit. Yeah, yeah. You can crank it up a little bit where it's, it's got a little bit more bubbles, so we're gonna evaporate out some of that moisture. Okay, perfect. Yeah. All right. But I'm just gonna be a little ghetto real quick. I was doing it cute, but I'm just gonna pour this here. There we go. Everybody. I'll Crock pot, let it slow simmer. Yes, Courtney. Um, that's essentially what I wound up doing. Um, <laughs> in addition, uh, in an effort to be productive today, I was trying to have everything prepped and I over prepped. Like I misinterpreted Jordan's prep work. And so I pretty much took all the ingredients for the masala, except for the garam masala, and like put it all together in one big happy pot, which I was supposed to. <laughs> so, <laughs> Said, go ahead and just take all that, add some water, a little stock, let that cook and simmer down like mm -hmm. you would put it in a crock pot. Because in the mm -hmm. crock pot, you would just throw it all in there. No, no, no. I haven't eaten anything. I was just trying to prep for this moment. So yeah, she's just simmering low and slow. Crock pot and just let it slow simmer. So that's another way that you can do it as well. Like still marinate the meat separately, I think, right? Yes. Yeah, marinate the, uh, marinate the meat separately, but combine everything for your um, masala, put it in the crock pot, and just let it slow simmer. Yes. And then, so what we'll do, crank your heat up on your chicken now that it's in there to like a medium high heat so that it comes up to a boil. Once you have it to a boil, then lower it to a simmer. 
and we're just gonna let this cook and now we're going to cook our rice if you missed it at the beginning i was talking to everybody about the basmati rice um if you missed that you're going to want to rinse off your rice um and ig is going to cut us off in like nine minutes so thanks guys um so you know the drill um you know go hey, out and I come back you. in but yeah. oh there's a question back in oh there's so many questions do you make your own naan? Yes, I do make my own naan. I did not make my own naan tonight because of the confines of too many things to do um, in a short amount of time. But if you are cooking along and you want to, um, you want me to email you the recipe that we're doing for this and you would like the recipe that I use when I, well, I don't use a recipe when I cook, but if you'd like a recipe for naan, I can send you one. Um, so Enjoy for the rice, rice, rinse off your rice because we want to rinse off some of the starch. Yes. The non recipe. Yeah, Alexandra. Yeah, Alexandra, just uh, DM me and I'll uh, DM me your email address and I'll send you my recipe for naan. Um, once you've rinsed off your rice, however much rice you have, do one part rice two parts water i have one and a half cups of rice so i'm going to do two parts so i'm going to do three cups of water usually i will do i cook my rice in um stock but basmati rice is this beautifully fragrant um version of rice and i really like the natural fragrance that basmati rice has that and jasmine rice i kind of just leave alone um, all the other rices, I will, rices, is that a word? What do you want? Rices, the, <laughs> the plural of the rice. That's all this is like my <laughs> Mises, Mises, anyway, all of the other rice, I usually will cook it stock, but I love the natural fragrance of basmati, so I just cook it in water because I like just the way it tastes with just like a little pat of butter. But if you want to cook it in um, like a chicken or a vegetable stock, feel free to do that. But just one part rice to two parts water. And give me one second to get my water. See, I already made my rice. When I tell y'all I was prepared, I just didn't want no, I didn't want to burn no rice tonight. I knew I was coming in hot. I didn't want no trouble. <laughs> So if you all are cooking with us, please like give us a thumbs up. Let us know that y'all hanging in, that y'all good, happy with what's going on so far. Let us know. Yeah, and then um, ladies and gents, just bring your rice up to a boil. Lower it to a simmer. Pop the top on it. Cook it for 8 to 10 minutes. Turn it off. Leave it and then move it off of the burner. Leave it covered for five minutes. Don't open it. Leave it covered for five more minutes and then fluff it with a fork and you'll be good to go. So I tried to separate the two. We've got, I haven't been given, um, took notes for the spouse. Why you? Why can't you cook for the spouse? Hmm? I don't know. I, this is probably your people, but why you can't make a nice meal for the spouse, okay? Um these, this is my fam going back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Robert not going to cook this, y'all. It is boneless chicken, so that's the thing, Robert. You might want to try it. James would be very, very impressed. You could do this with um, chicken breast. So mine has come to a boil, so I've just lowered it to like a nice medium. I'm just going to simmer it. I want to make sure that my chicken is cooked all the way through. It's just simmering. Nice and low. It smells. Oh, it smells divine in here, y'all. And I'm so hungry. I'm so it hungry. Here. It smells really good. And uh, for those of y'all who are joining in, I did the um, the dairy-free version. So I used cashew butter instead of the milk. And then I actually found the cool um, yogurt. Kite Hill is the brand. They make really good um, dairy-free yogurts that... They don't taste the same, but they kind of taste enough the same to make you believe it. For recipe purposes, it definitely worked. So. Yeah, so for this, like, because Larissa had asked me, can she use coconut milk? And my suggestion 
was yeah. you can, but it's going to add so much moisture. The addition of the heavy cream was really to add like a creamy component to it and not necessarily um, liquid. Um, so she's adding a cashew butter to it because it's just adding a richness and a creaminess to it. And cashew butter is one of those um, kind of nut butters that adds that creamy component to it without adding a ton of additional flavor. To me, when you add like almond butter, you can really taste almond butter. I love almond butter, but it's, it's pretty recognizable. Cashew butter blends pretty nicely into recipes without it being super recognizable so that one is a nice one to add to something like this without it really standing out peanut butter and you definitely that would have been a whole nother dish y'all so i was really surprised at it jordan like i i tried the uh, masala before you know all of this because i'm like i sent her the picture i'm like is this what it's supposed to look like she's like no and i was like hell no my <laughs> bad but I'm like, but it tastes good. <laughs> I was like, what am I looking at? I was like, what happened to your chicken? She was like, these are my onions. And I was like, oh. My, they not chef like onions. Okay. <laughs> they not chef like onions. They just, they, they, enough that, they just want to impart flavor. <laughs> so I was thinking if we do these classes beyond quarantine or hell, we don't even know how long these are going to last, y'all. But nice. let's nice talk skills. about nice and how you can help us help ourselves <laughs> I was thinking about a nice skills is there a way to cut the onion where you don't get banged up like with the eyes like is there a certain way to cut it where like so the way it's cellularly structured it won't give off whatever enzyme or whatever it is that makes you tear up or is that so, based on how ripe the onion is like if it's an overripe onion it's going to be more I don't know onion. how much scientific fact there is behind this, but my grandmother Davis taught me when you cut an onion in half and you rinse it under cold water, when you first rinse it, it's got this like kind of silky, filmy layer on it that you can feel. And as yeah. you're rinsing it, eventually you don't feel that. Mm. Once you don't feel that, once you begin to cut it, I don't cry anymore. When I tell you I have the most sensitive eyes to onions, once she told me that, as long as I rinse it, and I'll just rinse it and just literally, like, rub it until it doesn't feel filmy anymore, as long as I do that, I don't cry. So I don't That's know what the science is. I don't know what it is that I'm rinsing, um, but it, it feels filmy. Um, but if you do that, you don't cry. So grandma knows. Good points. And Leah's saying, like, just you, know, you soak it in water. It sounds like the same thing. Something um, along those refrigerate. I refrigerate my onions, and I still cry. I have moist. to rinse them. <laughs> okay, so you guys know the drill. Instagram is telling me I have a minute 52. Okay. Um, so sure. since you have this, I'm going to just go ahead and log back in, and then I'm going to show you how to download all this after we are done with all this. So me do it and you jump back on mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I'm see. I've got it. This time. okay. We're just <laughs> okay, guys. So when this ends, I'm gonna restart it. Don't go nowhere. Come back because we haven't even gotten into the wine yet. But the food's almost done. We're like once this is almost simmer, the rice is almost done. We're gonna heat up the naan um, because it's just better hot, and then we're gonna get into the tasting and talking about the wine. But this is a quick recipe, and then we're gonna have a little bit fun to start drinking. What word? Um, <laughs> is it moist? <laughs> it's probably moist. <laughs> um, but Thanks. thank you. Um, but yeah, we'll hop back on and talk about the wine and sit and really delve into um, which pairing we felt went a little bit better with this. But you guys know the drill. So we've got 46 seconds. So we'll see you guys in a minute. If you're... Uh, Back on in. Come back to the club, the kitchen. We coming. Mm -hmm. We'll be back. Grab a snack and come on back. Yes, do that. Grab a snack. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys in a minute. Oh, shout out to Grandma Davis. Yes. Let's put my dad in the comments. He's so funny. <laughs> Listen. I hope you're making this dish, Dad. Support me. Okay. All right, we love you guys. We'll see you in a minute. Um, all right, we'll be back.
Yes. Oh, no, you cannot talk. Oh, there she goes. No. Cuz I'm still alive. Ooh. You can say hello and then go away. Back like we never left. Hi, friends. Hi. Hi. Hey, beautiful. She thinks nobody knows she exists, which is ridiculous. Okay, goodbye. About you, sis. Yes, you are super duper important. We know all about you. Yes, that's Marissa. Hi, Miss Marissa. Miss Marissa. Okay, goodbye. Hi. <laughs> Don't encourage her, y'all. Don't encourage this nonsense. <laughs> encourage the baby. It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, um, does she know who I am? Stop does it. She Goodbye, Avani. Oh, Hey, y'all, come on back in. Okay, so my rice is almost boiling. I'm just going to add a little. Uh, let me just talk about this this uh, tripod thing because these is my angles, y'all. I'm just saying. I'm just saying this this down view. Let me just talk about it. <laughs> Like, right, right. for a moment because today was not filled with many highs, but okay, that was good. Real out here. <laughs> Love you, Al. Thank you, Allison. Oh, I'm ready to eat, y'all. You don't even know. I'm making sure my phone don't die on y'all. <laughs> oh, hey. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and this is another one like the, like the beef bourguignon that um, tomorrow. Amazing. Ooh, I don't even know. Come together. Yes. Feel, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to talk about the naan really quickly. Um, what are we supposed to do with that? I found these <laughs> fabulous little non rounds in my bakery section that they were like, oh, perfect size for um, you two could make a recipe book with the suggestive wine pairings. Okay, so Alexandra, that's something that I was in the process of saying and I got distracted. After we get enough of these recipes, I am going to make a book and I'm going to put it together and it's going to be like $12. So <laughs> you read my mind. Um, these go, these can go in like the toaster. So look at God. Um, but you well, just want to keep these up so you can throw these like in the microwave for like 20 seconds. I would wet a paper towel, wrap, not drip it, wet it, wring it out, wrap it just to keep them moist and just throw it in there for like 20, 30 seconds just to heat them up. Or if you want it to be, uh, oh, well. Well, if you want to be a blessing, Allison, I'm not going to block a blessing. Now, if you want to pay 20, I'm not going to tell you no. I'm not going to tell you no. Um, if you're going to uh, put it <laughs> in the... <laughs> a long day. If you want to uh, put it in the oven, you could heat them up in the oven. I All right. am not... Oven. There's a, there's one, two, three, four... There's five of us in here today, so I'm not going to put these in the... Uh, in the toaster but like tomorrow when i'm having some lunch um these this little round size is awesome because it's the toaster size but yeah um i'm just gonna wrap mine in a in a damp paper towel surround it throw it in the microwave 30 seconds just to get it nice and warm and then cut it okay. into some squares hey, come in. so mm -hmm. A damn paper towel, throw in the microwave for how long? 20 to 30 I seconds, just until it's warm. Mom did. Put it on a plate and then cover it with maybe two paper okay. towels. Yeah. Yeah. My rice is boiling, so I lowered it to a simmer. Um, so like a medium, medium, low heat, and I put the top on it. My tikka masala is still simmering. At this point, my chicken is cooked, but... You could turn it off, but just leave it going. It's at this point, you're just kind of developing more flavors. It can't hurt to just let it keep going. It's 
it's not going to hurt it at this point. I have it on a very low, low, medium heat. It's just developing yeah. all the goodness. I am going to give it a little taste for salt and pepper because I know uh, that my chicken is cooked, but I want to see where I'm at for salt and pepper and then see if I want to add, I'm kind of addicted to cumin. So I just want to see where I'm at. Oh, it's good. It's real good. A little salt, little pepper for me. That's all right. That's good, good. That is good. Oh, come on, Jordan. Okay. Uh, on How about another hit? Straight? Another hit four weeks in a row. I mean, come on. Another one. Okay. And obviously, it's like every recipe is not going to be for everybody. I love Indian food, so this is just one that works for me. Good. That's really good. And tomorrow? Ugh. The rice to it to kind of like it all. And oh, my goodness. I wish today was tomorrow because it's good today. Tomorrow? Wow. I can't eat those. So Hold on. The most important part. What's what's it go with? Oh, hello, somebody. Okay, okay, with the gruner. Oh wait, I don't have Let's... any more wine in my cup. <laughs> Allison, is it good? I see a damn. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> How we That's feeling, y'all? Charmaine, you cooking with us tonight? Oh my my um my Syrah opened up real nice. Oh she's fabulous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. The naan. It's just gonna be like a little this is my plate. I don't need a plate. The naan is the plate. I just pile it on and this is just my like, my vessel of of goodness. I just can't even deal. I love naan so much, but it's bread. Amazing with the Gruner. Yes, Kitty. Yes. I mean, I mean, honestly, like, either way, I'm happy. Are you? I haven't tried it before. Yeah. I've had, we. this is our fourth time doing this. Like, I've had times where just like, oh, there's a clear winner. Ooh, ooh, I like it with the Gruner, though. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> they both taste amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Right I, listen. If you like white, go with the Gruner. If you prefer red, go with the Syrah. You won't be disappointed with this recipe. Like, for me, my knee-jerk reaction when it comes to drinking wine is I want something that's easy to drink, you know, unless I'm pairing with food and we get all complicated. But other than that, I just want something that's easy to drink. I'm normally going with something white, rosé, or bubbly. Red wine, for the most part, for me, I'm going to be drinking them if I'm pairing them with food. I love light body reds like Pinot Noirs and Gamay's and like from Beaujolais and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. But my knee jerk reaction, if I had a long day, I'm opening up a white or a rosé or more than likely bubbles. Um, golly. I'm the complete opposite. And that's why I think right. that's, this is so, funny. so that's fun. Like pairing. Because <laughs> you always come through with the red. And I'm like, no, whites, whites, whites. And I'm not fine, but... <laughs> We're doing a rib. Um, did you get all your wines from Total? I did get all my wines from Total. I did. I did. I got my wine from my neighborhood um, wine shop. Um, I'm, we're both in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And so it has a wine shop called Three Parks, um, black owned. And she, her palate, I trust her with anything. Like I literally will say, Sarah, I'm doing this. I need this. And she will get me right. So I hit her up. I was like, we're making tikka masala. I'm looking for a gruner. I'm looking for a northern Rhone Syrah. Literally, she sent me screenshots. I'm like, yeah, that's in my my order. Because it wasn't just that that I ordered. Let me tell y'all how yeah. I earned my wine. So my total wine is 2.1 miles from my house. I walk because <laughs> I'm drinking so much that I have to counterbalance. I mean, yes, there are some wonderful antioxidants in red wine. It's good for the blood. You know what I'm saying? It 
clears free radicals from the body, but there's also calories, okay? There's calories. Um, red wine, for my keto people, I think in a glass of wine, there's two grams of net carbs, so it is keto friendly, okay? Not Moscato, but I'm talking like a Cabernet. It's two grams of net carbs, so we can have red wine because I was keto for a while. I lost like 35 pounds in four months and then gained them all back because praise God. <laughs> Yes, but yes, I right. walk to Total Wine, I get my wine, I earn my calories, and then I walk home. So I get like a cool almost five miles um, for you. Getting, and I make that trip two or three times a week. Right. Whatever. <laughs> yes, we will show the producers as soon as we're done cooking, which we're almost done. I've got a two minute timer on my rice. And then I'm going to have my little heat me up some non. Then we'll talk about our producers. Total Wine has yeah. so much to choose from and price right. Yes, I love. Yes, Rod, I do love Total Wine. Oh, I've been meaning to email you too because I want to do a wine dinner at the Bibliquette. So let's talk, my friend. Let's talk. Um, but yes, um, I just really like the selection there. And I don't have a local wine shop within walking distance of me and I don't drive so but and it's like right now ubering or lifting and social distancing doesn't really make sense so the two miles for four bottles of wine you earned it I've earned it you earned it real talk okay so yeah. oh it smells amazing in the house right now this you know, curry lingers a bit. Like curry's that 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 dish you make, and it don't it lingers for like two days. Like yeah, I had curry two days ago. <laughs> I like I wake up in the morning, come downstairs, like yep, made curry last night. Yep, <laughs> but it always just smells so good. But you know what else does? So does fried chicken. So does fish. Fried so does chicken. fried fish. So it's like people be like, oh, the curry smell. But I'm like, if you fried some fishes and chicken, I'm like your house has an odor too so why are you talking mess like your house i won't say stinks because i love the smell of curry but i also love the smell of fried chicken so i'm like your house is not odor free either ma'am it is not look at look at robert <laughs> yes you already know how i feel about lingering aromas <laughs> like i want to cook and then i wake up hey amanda hi You're amanda so y'all, we have to like kind of bring you into real quick, like how our union even came together. Yeah, but Dream. real quick, take your Darling. rice off the burner. My timer went off. Oh, yeah. Move it off so the heat. Could. Leave the top on it. Five minutes, then it's done. Don't take the top off of it. Leave it on the stove top. Just move it off your heat. Leave the top on it five minutes just so it can steam. We'll fluff it with a fork. After that, if you're done with that step, then it'll be time to eat. We will garnish. We'll go rice, tikka masala on top, cilantro. If you don't like cilantro, grow up, but don't use it. <laughs> grow up. <laughs> cilantro and then your warmed up naan and then get yourself a cozy little spot and a little sarah, a little Gruner Velt leaner, and then we'll sit and we'll start talking about our wine. It's a party. It's a party. And it's dinner time. While we're doing that, Amanda quietly didn't even know that she brought us together so dream big darling is an amazing organization and their mission is to foster the leadership of young women in the wine and spirits industry so that we can you know put our best foot forward i had the model down before amanda don't be mad at me now but that's pretty much what it comes down to and so i was fortunate to be a scholarship recipient for their inaugural um dream big darling retreat last year in September and it was my first time glamping it was this amazing like spiritual elevation that I didn't ex ex uh, expect and I got to connect with so many amazing women so fast forward Jordan saw because I was very verbal and talked about my experience wait let me pause you and, so there's two parts to this oh yeah I don't okay. even know that I got to even talk to you about this I was working uh -uh. as a sommelier at City Winery Charm's Closet, Charmaine is in here. I met her and she was, I used to work in the tasting room. She was one of my guests in the tasting room. And she said, 
hey, do you know Larissa from Lotus Vine Wine? I follow her on Instagram. She's fabulous. And I said, no, I've never heard of her. And she was like, Thanks. you should follow her. She's fantastic. She showed me your gram. And I was like, she's fabulous. I started following you. That was like right before you went on the retreat. You went on the retreat. And I was like, what is this Dream Big Darling? That also looks fabulous. I want to glam started following Dream Big Darling shortly after that. Then they posted about the scholarship for the one that I got. Yes. For Wine Speak. So it was all like very serendipitous. Right after I got Wine Speak, we hosted um, Andre Mack, um, winemaker yeah. out of Oregon. Yeah. We hosted his book signing at City Winery and Larissa was there. And I was like, I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> That's literally, guys, the only time Larissa and I have met. The only time. Literally, we made eyes on each other physically one time. But when we get on the other side of this, Rona, oh, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but she was posting about Dream Big Darling. I was following. I saw the opportunity for the scholarship. I applied for it. I got the scholarship and went to Paso amazing. Robles for this amazing um opportunity to um, just talk about story and meet Amanda and Paso Robles and just had the most amazing experience connecting with other females. Not today, Satan. <laughs> other amazing yeah. women in the uh, wine industry <laughs> and my other darlings that uh, with scholarship recipients, I met like six master psalms. I was like, what is life right now? And yeah. it was just, um, it was incredible. And I DM'd Larissa because she was like, oh, this is amazing when she saw where I was. And I was like, this is literally because I, because of you. Like I saw that you were there. Mm -hmm. I saw this organization and I applied and here I am. So, you know, the Lord will put people in your life to get you where Seriously. you need to be. He will open doors. And if you're not where you're supposed yeah. to be, he will make sure that you see the doors that you need to be walking through. So here we yes. are, y'all. Now y'all out here flambeing and making curry. And you didn't even know how you got here. <laughs> Listen, so the fact that even this came to fruition, like my husband had this idea. He's like, you should align with the female chef and y'all figure something out and go IG Live. Everyone's going IG Live. I was like, you know, that's a good idea. Immediately, Jordan was the first person I thought of. I don't even really, like, I didn't, I knew you were a chef, but I didn't know anything else outside of that. I knew that because of Dream Big Darling, I knew that you, your pedigree was thorough. Because Amanda is, if Amanda vouches for you, Amanda vouches for you, right? right? right. So, immediately, and we had talked about Certified Song because you're studying for Certified Song and WSET3. So we had those conversations. You were the first person that popped in my head. And then like, we started digging into the resume. I'm like, oh, sis. <laughs> I, I, did a little, I did a little something every now and again, a little something. Serendipity, truly organic, truly the universe and the good Lord above, like bringing us together for this. And I mean, so dope. Like, couldn't be happier to have this union. We, I've learned so much. <laughs> I flambéed, and my you eyebrows did. were lit. You did flambé. And my cousin told me that, because she was the one that posted that meme that was like, oh, you about to flambé right now. I'm like, on IG Live? Yeah, on yeah, IG? yeah, yeah. I was like, watch your eyebrows. <laughs> your hair is blade, but <laughs> we're going back to our natural states. It's going to get real. All right, so my chicken is... Is, is it ready? My, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to get a bowl. I'm going to get a plate. I'm, All right, cool. I'm ready. Uh, we appreciate the love. Like, seriously, like, the story, like, you can't, you couldn't make it up. Like, it was, I text Jordan, no lie, at, like, 1130 at night because I'm very much the spirit that when I, there's an idea, like, I have to move. Like, don't wait. Don't stop. This is your... And this is your avenue, move. And the spirit said, move. I don't know her like that, but I'm going to text her at 1130. <laughs> and sis texts me back. I was like, are. hey, sure. I was like, yeah, I'm down. I'm like, I don't know. I got my iPhone 8. I don't even know if the people going to be able to see me, but let's Girl, do I'm, it. I'm six. So <laughs> listen, this company phone here, listen. this is 
like an iPhone 6S. It's not even a 7, but this is where we are in life. And Charms, thank you so much for Charms Carla. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Like, who would have known? She's been big <laughs> up in you in these streets, man. And I was like, she is dope. Thanks for the... She was like, I'm so glad you guys connected. I'm like, absolutely. You know, like, my girl Shahira always says, stay low, keep firing. Like, doesn't matter what you see going on around you. The people keep that doing watch what you the recipes is, is the same, but the sauce, it's the sauce. The sauce is different, that little skosh. Everybody can't do what you do. I can write can't it do all it down, you. but you can't, you can't do it like I do it now, okay? That's right. <laughs> you know, I can, I can give you the recipe. You still can't do it the way I do it now, okay? Yes. Are, we, are we ready to eat? I'm ready I to think eat. So. Okay. I got here the rice real quick, but my naan is ready. Okay. We're good. Let's figure it out. Okay. And let's talk about Wines. My wines are starting to warm up and it's making me sad, but I'm excited about this pairing. It gives me joy. It does. I'm trying to figure out the logistics um, of getting this whole operation now to where I where I sit usually. I'm like, I have a whole like team of... Uh, okay, Yoshiar, I had to cook early today for fam, but the recipe was litty. Hey. Thank you, are Yeah. I'm gonna just make like a little bowl of something. Yeah. Because you have to like, we have to plate it and take the picture. <laughs> but right now I'm hungry. I am hungry. I'm gonna have my daughter make me a plate, but I'm gonna lose my light here for a minute. Let's just, okay. not so fly now, huh guys? <laughs> but I need to move. I don't want to stand up the whole time. So Can you I've got to I move the whole, uh, the production team over to my seat. Uh, so just bear with me as I figure that out and then I'm going to have my mini make me some food a family affair right she want to be in this so bad anyways listen here like Dre is literally like keeping my girl I can't even say her name because when he hears her name she's going to want to get in <laughs> I heard my name are you ready for me <laughs> <laughs> she's ready for her close up she is, and I'm like, no, sis, not right now. Your time is coming, <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> but I have to keep my cell phone plugged in because let me just tell you about my battery life not letting me be great on this. It could phone. matter a matter of time before it dies because that live takes up a lot. Dream big darling in the house. Hi. Hey, hey. <laughs> Try one. Ew. And if you guys are looking for an organization, specifically my lady, not necessarily Psalms, but in the wine industry, that um, I'm just so grateful that I got to go to that uh, wine speak in Paso, especially before the world shut down, because that was one of the most incredible. What an amazing way. I... <laughs> Like, there are no, like, my back. I didn't think, I knew I was going to be inspired. Like, I, I knew that I'd never been glamping before. This is going to be different. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was going to be inspired. I didn't know, like, fire. I didn't know the, the spiritual, like, you know, touch that I would have. Like, I, I don't know how Wine Speak was. I think Wine Speak may have been a bit more, like, wine, wine focused, clearly yeah. the name. I cried so much. <laughs> And I and I'm I'm a thug. I don't cry like that. When I I'm cry, it's ugly. It's ooh, it's ugly because it's overcompensation for the times I kept it together. Mm -hmm. I'm up in there, like, ooh, ooh, and like letting all these things I didn't even know was was within me out. But yeah. I came out powered, and I'm like, how do I continue to do the work that we've been doing, which is to, you know, elevate all of us, like create. If the table, the table is there, there's a seat, maybe, maybe not. Can we make another table with the, you know, an equitable, equitable table with an equitable seat? Right. Um, do we flip the table, make a new one? <laughs> it's like all these different thoughts that you start to have because you realize there's so much opportunity out there and you have organizations like this that are willing to, you know, dive into your dreams and help you bring it to fruition. So... Tears happen when your heart has no more words, nothing but love. True. I was speechless. <laughs> I was like, you know, it's just. 
Yeah. So. Ours wasn't um, maybe from that perspective. It was definitely more wine-based, yeah. but um, I think our scholarship was more for like um, – like some of the call for it was like for up and coming like female songs and females yeah. in the wine industry and it was just an honor to be amongst like one of the uh, one of the girls that I met that was there was sitting for master song and I was just sitting there and I'm looking at me and I'm looking at her and I'm looking at me and I was like what am I doing here and I'm like I'm like so I'm sitting for master um. song I'm like I don't. I'm not sure you still that, that you know what I mean but it's just like I'm like what an honor to be even considered in the same you know category as as someone that in you know, under usual circumstances I would have been like uh this is my girl Emily I'm like I, we were not on the same level like Emily please teach me and we're just sitting there both there you know representing the same organization for their scholarship. So it's just like, you know, guys, if you feel like, um, and someone very close to me has always taught me, like, if you feel like you don't qualify, apply anyways. <laughs> like the job, yes. the scholarship, Sorry. like if you feel underqualified, so, because, oh, so just apply. Like the job that I have right now, they were asking for all types of qualifications that, um, certifications that I don't have yet. And I applied anyways. And that was one of the first things the guy said in the interview. He said, your experience far outseeds your certifications. And he was like, so to me, it doesn't even matter. And had I not had that instilled in me, I wouldn't, I would have taken that and not even applied. And this is like the most amazing job I've ever had. But it's like, you know, he will qualify you, you know, my believers or whatever, but just apply just apply the worst they can say is no the, so what but yep. i was just she so, rests i was well. just so honored to be Rinse. there and i opened up we're talking about Syrah today we had a 1995 domain jean louis uh cuvee with fred dame and i was like is this my life because because it is. this is a seven thousand dollar bottle of wine like this this cannot be this is not my life. I'm like, I'm just sitting there like. And you showed up. I was like, this is the happiest place on earth. Literally right now. Like nobody on earth is happier than me right now. And I'm like, I'm drinking an Hermitage with Fred Dame. Like, I'm so happy. <laughs> like, so if nothing else, just, so just try. Just try. You're only, you, you are your only superpower. No one else can bring what you bring to the table. The only shots you miss are the ones you don't take. Take a risk, and then charms closet with the 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 bow on top. That's the word for sure. Listen, <laughs> my mom will always say, hey, "All they can do is say no." And if all they can do is say no, what happens if they say yes? Right? But I used to really struggle. So with that. it all I worked really out. Struggled with that. Oh, I do too. Imposter syndrome. Oh, I came in hot yeah. today and today and was like, oh, I'm good. I didn't need to really like a pep talk. Like Shakira, Black Girl Sign 2 is good to give me a pep talk before I go live because I'm always like, is someone going to call me out? Is, is you know, am I going to say something wrong? So Shakira always gives me my pep talk, but because I had to just talk about 40 people about the wines that I represent, I was I'm like, I'm clicking. Let's just go into it. I didn't need my pep talk today, but I doesn't matter. And they say if you don't you know you don't love something as much when that pitter patter in your heart isn't there anymore, right? Like I get butterflies yeah. every time. It doesn't matter how many times I have to speak in front of a group of people about wine. I get butterflies every time. <laughs> yeah. And here we yeah. are. Oh, I have Fly. the worst anxiety about being in front of people, being on camera. Oh, like the first, like two hours leading up to these, it's like, don't talk to me zone. My daughter would be like tiptoeing around me. And I'm like, I'm sorry, babe, but I'm like, my anxiety, I'm just, I'm not good with, I don't like being on camera. I don't like, I don't like, I don't like it. I'm like actually really shy. I don't like it. Just, I'm just, I have a lot of anxiety. And then you get in there and I'm like, okay, I'm drinking. I'm just going to keep drinking until... 
the nerves, but it's a lot. It's a lot. But y'all are going so live is, is pressure. It's live. Anything can happen, right? Like I can flambe and lose eyebrows right now. That would be great. <laughs> I'm not trying to scream. <laughs> in theory. In theory. Both All right, so what's bomb. your consensus on your wine? I left my wine. Avani, I'm going to have my baby. Break. I love them both. Do you? I love them both for different reasons, honestly. Um, either one. Either <laughs> one works beautifully. Okay. Um, so Syrah from the Northern Rhone. And can you bring my wine over here, please? This is a wine that has beautiful structure. Mm. So when you're looking at the wine... This is one of the wines where if you look at it, you're going to see that the color is going to be what we would call intense. Thank you, Sellers Club. This, if you were to put like words, like words right here, if you put like words behind this, they're going to be harder to read. Um, that tells me something versus like a Pinot Noir and yeah, May where you put that versus a white background where there might be words on it. You're going to be able to see right through it. So Syrahs are typically like purpley, purple in color. They can be a deep ruby. Syrahs is in Australia. Same grape, just different area. Um, everywhere else in the world is called Syrah. But um, the Rhone is where Syrah is uh, king.